We're rolling. We're on. Let's do it. We're on with Gary V. Thank awesome. you. This is incredible. This is really awesome for me to be here today. Uh, I got my man Jim McD, who's been with me from the very beginning. He's kind of seen all the stuff I've have uh, grow over the years. He was a, a bouncer <laughs> driving a beat up Chrysler 300 when I met him. I love it. Pretty much. <clears throat> where, the book. where was that? Uh, that was, well, you guys were living in Davis at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, that was Davis, uh, California. Back California. in 2005, Five, 2006, yeah. somewhere in there. You read Crush It? Read a book called Crush It. How'd you get you it? You may have heard, you know? of it. Uh, heard of it. My dad was into it. My dad is the one. My dad's a huge mentor to me, much like your dad yeah. is to you. And uh, he's the one who kind of told me about it. I was like, Dad, I'm not really into reading. Da, da, da. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I hate to read. Yeah, me too. It's a huge challenge for me. So I get the audio book. And Which it's you even better. Yeah, it's narrating it. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, this guy's annoying as hell. <laughs> is that, that's right? That's this guy's that. got a lot of fire. But once I started listening to it more, I was like, this you is You were just, able to get through that, right? I was able to get through that just fine. A because, lot of people, some people don't. Well, the reason I'm able to get through it is because I realized very quickly into the book that that's who you are. Yeah. So when somebody's trying to be amplified or over the top sure, if for bullshit it, reasons, yeah. then I'm like, fuck this I guy. I get it. I'll take anybody in their pure form. You're right. Anybody. And, yeah, and I, I enjoyed it a lot, and some of the general principles you shared in that book uh, helped me and my wife tremendously. experience when my best friend passed away. Like he was a colonel at uh, the Pentagon, and he had a ton of people at his funeral, and everybody was saying these fantastic things about him. Like, I knew he was a great guy, but there are people saying that he changed their, the course of their lives. And like, have I done that for anybody? Yeah, I get it. Like, like, how many pallbearers can I pull together, <laughs> yeah. you know? I get it. Jordan here told me that fitness has changed your life and it's putting a lot of money in your bank account. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely did not say that. It's been, you know what's, you know what's really interesting? You know he actually right? said the, kind of almost the exact opposite. You know, it's really interesting. A lot of people ask me about getting into better shape over the last couple of years. You know, it's so funny. It's the same way I think about business and life. Do I, it's unbelievable to me that I don't necessarily feel so much better. Like we keep, you know, and you guys probably are more grounded in this. It's been fun to like realize you keep finding new spots. Like, oh shit, now I've realized my shoulder. We've been like, this is literally last week. You don't know it. I didn't know it three, you know, I knew that I was not doing anything that was smart mm -hmm. with my eating or physical fitness three years ago, which is why I started doing it. You kind of stuff it under the table. Yeah, I, you know, I, I did it because I knew I wasn't doing the right behavior. Right. But to say I feel so different, there's little, there's a couple little things. Like I know when I cut carry Xander down the street, one right. hit, one armed for four blocks, and yeah. don't get tired after three yeah. steps. That makes sense. Grabbing my luggage, but energy-wise, I don't feel any different because yeah. I have so much natural energy. You had a lot of energy anyway. But even though I don't feel these remarkable short-term results. I know what how this plays out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what my life looks like at seventy four. You know, you got to understand supply and demand. The pond got bigger. What what we've seen in our community is is people's lifts getting a lot better. So <laughs> I'm watching him, and you're know, watching this guy, and watching that guy, and because the lifts have gotten so much bigger, now it's what a seven hundred pound deadlift used to be kind of the norm. Now we're the seeing norm more, is like exceptional. Well, now now we're seeing yeah in, in mm -hmm, power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're seeing 800, 900, and thousand pound deadlifts. What do you think it, Instagram has done for business? Has it done something similar where they're seeing somebody like you and it's driving them to? That's push a really themselves? that's a really good observation. So I think what what that does when you when you have more awareness of everything, what it does is exposes people. So I don't think there's a general answer of right, that, right. right? Winners say, fuck, 750, I'm going 760. <laughs> right. A lot of people go the other way and get discouraged and bow, okay. bow out. <laughs> it's the way I think about rich kids. I've now, I've succumbed, and it was something I tried, I don't know how I thought I was gonna fix this, but like, I'm aware that my children are gonna grow up extremely well off. Um, and they're gonna do one of two things once they realize what I'm up to. They're gonna look at that and they're gonna say, what I did with my dad, which for where we were seemed like a big accomplishment. I'm gonna climb that mountain and I'm gonna, I, I mean I used to tell my dad like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do so much more than you that you're not even, you're gonna feel that it's disrespectful to even put up our names and I mean I was so competitive with my own dad. I'm like, you're not even gonna say my name because it's gonna be disrespectful to compare the two of yeah. us and he would get mad too. We were competitive. But a lot, you know, I've been watching, I've, now I have fancy friends, well off friends, third generation wealth friends, mm -hmm. and a lot of kids go completely the other way. Yeah. Right, they're gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna climb that. 
and actually I kind of feel guilty that I fly in private jets and have a Hamptons home. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take mommy and daddy's money and give it away. I'm gonna be a non-profit or I'm gonna go build homes or, and by the way, I'm comfortable with whatever Misha and Xander decide to do. I, I genuinely am. But that's what happens when you get exposed to big things. Right. You either decide to go, and the reason you see 800 and more now yeah. is a small percentage of the great winners right. put in the triple work right. because they're aware yeah. and push it forward. One of the biggest reasons athletes are better in today's world is Magic Johnson didn't know that Larry Bird was taking 5,000 free throws. Yeah. They just found each other in college right. and were like, damn. Yeah. Now, everybody's, you know, when you're in six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, you have real, co- they're grading kids at such a young, you know where you sit. And it's pushing you harder if you're really that star. Right. And so, maybe Larry Bird would have taken 3,000 shots if he knew Magic was taking 1,200. Right. Uh, how old are your kids? Seven and four. What do you think is most important thing to do with them in terms of, you know, a parent is gonna be the one that has to guide their kid. You're gonna have to make your kid do things that they don't wanna do, such as like eat vegetables or finish their dinner, just not eat too many, too much sugar and so on, right? When it comes to something like- Or not, I think one of the great debates that I play with now is what is established cliche eat your vegetables and what is actually the value of that in reality? Right. Truth is, the far majority of people I know probably didn't eat their vegetables or probably ate too, not. definitely anybody who's 41 ate way too much sugar and drank <laughs> soda 24, I mean I drank soda every day of my yeah. life. Um, to me, the, uh, the things I think most about are number one, two, three, and four is to build self-esteem. So my belief is that self-esteem is the only drug that combats the world. Yeah. I genuinely That's believe powerful. that. powerful. In parallel, it's imperative that you don't build fake self-esteem. Right. Self-esteem can't be manufactured through rewarding, non-rewarding events. Right. So if like you persis- participation trophies. Correct. Yeah. You can't come in eighth place in the race in school and then get prized for that because that's just not real life. Mm-hmm. However, Xander, for example, this weekend when Max got hurt, his nephew stopped what he was doing and came over and showed amazing empathy for a four-year-old, that has become now the thing I've talked to him about for two days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he's incredible, that you have such a great heart. Right. Like, to me, you triple down, this is, by the way, this is me being a byproduct of being what I think perfectly parented. This is what my mom did. Yeah. My mom over-exaggerated my natural goodness as a person right. to make me believe it was like the most important thing. Mm-hmm. And she never, gave me third place trophies and when I lost, I lost. And she made me realize there were repercussions in life so when I got bad grades, even though she knew I was gonna be very special, I was literally punished. Like, it was like clockwork. You know how like the sun and the moon do their thing? From fifth grade to senior of high school, to senior of high school, I was punished every single mid-October, that's the first report card, late December, early March, and the end of the year. What age? From literally Forever. from fifth grade, for seven to eight years yeah. consistently, they, I was they grounded. Know. They know, learned all that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think it's interesting. I think, that, I think that subconsciously I knew that it wasn't the most important thing in the world, but I do like that she punished me and didn't let me completely disrespect the system, but she never let it hurt my confidence. Right. Right, she played it very smart, and there is something interesting my parents did. At 14, they said, look, tough guy, you're not gonna be a student, things are gonna work. And so that means you're gonna start working now. Yeah. And so I do think one of the great things my parents did, and I think a lot of parents should think about this, is if you don't have a student, even if they're an artist and wanna sing and paint, you need to figure out how to establish massive work ethic because the only thing that's controllable for somebody who's gonna bet on themselves in life is their work ethic, their talent, you can get it better, right? You can lift more, you can get better at things. But some, like, my calves and ass aren't naturally the, the same as everybody else. And there's people who are naturally like, I don't like, my chest is never gonna be as big as I necessarily want it. And there's certain things that are, right? But meanwhile, like, I'll sell you back the hat you're wearing right now. Right. I, I will. <laughs> and so I think that, I think it's important to teach work ethic because work ethic 
is the only thing that maximizes what you naturally have and it's really the best you can ask for. What about sports? What about sports with your children? I'm very into it. Uh, I'm a little worried about what the New York City dynamic of sports is. I didn't grow sports up. Sports are I, confusing today, it seems like to me. Like there, you have to be a part of something for so long and it seems like it just Yeah, sports are tricky. Like different here's what, here's what I would say. Be. I'm gonna use sports a little bit differently. I, I'm obsessed with competition. Yeah. And I think, and I really hope my kids are competitive. One, I'll say it again, I'm not interested in imposing any of my will on them. If, they, if they're not competitive, it'll be disappointing because I love it for about four seconds and then I'll trick myself into thinking it's great. <laughs> right. Like I'm just gonna go optimistic on it. Right. Um, sports is cool, team, team sports are cool. I think it teaches people a lot of a lot things. A of messages that they might learn. Yeah, there, it's cool. I mean listen, I love sports. I love sports. I love sports. My kids have shown interest in sports this year for the first time in a meaningful way. My daughter especially, which is a lot of fun for me. Um, yeah, again, I'm very weird. Like, like I, I really want to reverse engineer my kids. Right. I want to pay attention to their reactions, figure out what's driving them, and then quadruple down on it, and then instill the spirit of reality into it. How do you pay attention to them with so many different things going on? That's hard. It's hard, and I would tell you that that's like probably you sometimes you're on sure your I phone. Do. You sure just I do. fucking sure throw do. it over your shoulder. Or? No, I I, tr- I think my answer is I try. Yeah. First of all, I work too much, so the limited time I have with them, I try to stay focused. But like, I'm selfish in my own stuff too. I think it's important to be. You know, I think one of the things I worry about with a lot of stay-at-home parents, and obviously I don't know what the percentage are, but you know. I think we still live in a world where it's got to be in the 80s, maybe even 90s, that the woman's staying at home. I watch all these you know, there's incredible women that work for me, women entrepreneurs. When they, you know, it's been interesting for me. It's, it feels like such a difficult game for, you know, guys have it so easy when children come to the equation. I feel like there's an enormous amount of, I, you know, it, it, the balance of guilt, of keeping your own identity, mm. of, you know, so many of these women, you know, women are, you know, we're living in a great age where, it's not the archaic ages anymore. There's a lot of women that have unbelievable ambitions, the greatest ambitions, equal to the ambitions of men, which they didn't have 50, 60, 30, 90 years ago. And so like that transition seems very difficult and, and, and I think when you lose yourself in your children, you lose. Yeah. You lose, which then means your children lose. One of, the thing that, one of the things that I'm very, very obsessed with is I can't believe how many parents wrap their own self-esteem into their children's accomplishments. That's wild, isn't it? So this has been, this has been the big eye opener for me. This was probably the one thing I didn't, I think I anticipated quite a bit about parenting. Right. I think I nailed it. I'm good at predicting shit. <laughs> Here's where I missed by a mile. Like literally it struck me at a, at a parent event. I was like, wait a minute. You, wait a minute. You actually feel better about yourself because your kid can play chess. I, whoa, you, not you love your kid and you're happy for your kid. No, you think you're better because you're the parent of the chess player. (laughs) I, it blew me away. My parents never wrapped their self esteem in me. I wrapped my self esteem in only myself, not even my parents. Like, I I couldn't even under, I'm very empathetic which is why I'm a good salesman, and why I'm successful, and a lot of, that's my gift, gratitude and empathy. I wasn't empathy, empathetic to that because I hadn't lived it, I never tasted it, I never understood it. And then it opened up everything, like that's why people put bumper stickers of like <laughs> Harvard, you know. Okay. I'm like, oh shit. That's why parents force their kids into collecting debt right. to go to a university that makes the parent feel good versus the kid going to a secondary school or a community college where they don't. Like it's, cr- it unlocked the whole world of like, fuck you parents. <laughs> <laughs> I Back saw that, go ahead. I saw that in uh, Little League with, with my older son. There were two of the assistant coaches for his team would, ha- they would have to call the sheriff to calm them down because if there was a call at home plate that they didn't like or a strike or whatever. That I actually agree with. Would... I want to fight. <laughs> I, I, I get sports muscles. That to me is a little, that's, that to me is a, could be a nuance of that. That could be true uh-huh. if Rick wants to fight because he thinks he's little Timmy and he's a great baseball player. Uh-huh. I would just fight because I just want my kid's team to win the game. Yeah, I just want to win the game. But like, 
But it like, does get pretty heated, doesn't to it? Me, to me, those kind of things actually don't really freak me out as much as the politically correct world gets freaked out. I just don't think it makes any sense in the world. You're a parent. Your number one thing in the world is to do everything right by that child. Like they're at your mercy, they're like your kid. Yeah. And, and parents are, are misfiring. They're, they're you selfish. Have you heard this uh, quote before? Uh, the best way to have an impact on the world is to go home and love your family. Ever heard that before? Mm-mm. It's by Mother Teresa. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's great. It makes a lot of sense to me because I'm trying to impact, you know, lifters like this. Yes. I'm trying to impact trainers yes. and people in the fitness industry, and I'm super excited about it. Then I'm at home and I'm in my phone. I get it, man. And my little girl saying, it. "Daddy, daddy, daddy," and I'm like, "What? What am I? Why am I doing this?" I, I get it, and I and I phone. and I think that's right, and I also think. You know, I think it comes down to your circumstance too. So I'm the son of a first generation immigrant who worked every minute, left before I woke up, came home after I slept, slept in the home that I slept in every single night, took zero travel days. So was in the same home. My dad slept in the, this is not a divorce, this is not a traveling father like I am. This is my father slept in the same home that I slept in my entire life. I'm, I just want everybody to hear this because this is insane actually in hindsight. From the day I was born to the day I left, like all of them. Like, like old school, like, like just came home every night. I don't know what else to tell you. And I never saw him once. And when I tell you I never saw him once, I spent more time with my kids this President's Day weekend than my dad did with me my entire childhood combined. Yeah. Like I just want people, like I don't think people really, like you know even your, like, I don't think people, being resentful or was it like Didn't not? even cross my mind. Okay. What thank, was your impression? thank God dad worked so hard, we came from nothing, now we have a townhouse. Right. That's what it was. Mm. It was gratitude, it was optimism, right. and there wasn't a need. My mom was so incredible. And again, every kid's family. different. I didn't need my dad. Did I notice that a lot of people, dads were at the Little League games? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Did, my dad went to one Little League game my entire career, and I was pumped. And I did good, it was an all-star game, I played well. Like, but again, I was a kid that didn't need it. I didn't need my dad. I definitely needed my mom, you need something. But like, I didn't need anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I, I've never been somebody who validates himself on anything on the outside. And that is a gift. And I think that goes back, you have, how many, you have one, you have, I have two. two. Kids, yeah. Look, they're gonna be different. Right, they're gonna, right, they're different. And so like, you gotta look, like, like Misha, my daughter reminds me of me, she, she never gave a shit that I would leave the house. Bye, Dad. Mm. Misha, I'm gonna be gone for four days. Mm. I'll be back. Bye, Dad. <laughs> My little guy's like, Dad, like not. And he's and I'm like, oh fuck. This I didn't realize how good I had it with Misha. Like this actually hurts my feelings. I'm emotional. This is sad. Like, and you'll adjust. The other thing is, I just sent Tyler, my admin, like, hey, this is and this is where I was going with this. This is very long winded to the thing that I. How old are your kids? Thirteen and nine. Right. So you guys are really in this zone. You. You know how you said the vegetables thing? Right. I'm very against that. Let me explain how, what I'm I mean. Against vegetables too. Let's make uh, by the way, let me. Let's let's make a fucking stand. Well, together. actually, here's a, here's a huge irony. You know this. I love vegetables. <laughs> I'm against the cliche thing. So one of the biggest conversations I'm having with my wife right now is like, look, Lizzie, I go to Oslo, Hong Kong, Melbourne. I'm going on all these amazing trips. I'm like, you need to start. I know that you're a little bit more by the book. That's my wife. Like, I need you to be open to what I want to do, which is. Misha's gonna miss 13 days of school a year that make no sense. And they're gonna, and that's because I'm gonna take her to Oslo. Mm-hmm. And she's gonna see what daddy does and we're gonna spend six hours on the, eight hours on the plane together and then I'm gonna take an extra, what will change right. and you change. Right now, I'm in every place, I, I don't, I've not, when I sleep in one place twice, we slept in Belgium two nights, it's weird. I stay nowhere more than one night. Nowhere. Uh, trips are to Europe and Asia, these are, Eight hour trips, nine hour trips, 13 hour trips, they are insane. We didn't even stay a night in Ireland. We right, we went to, left. right, I went to Dublin and didn't even, like never even slept there, right? Like wow. went, went from New York overnight to Dublin, Dublin speech, get on a plane, go to Belgium, that's why we had two nights in Belgium. So, but now I'll adjust. Now that the kids, you know, you get to adjust, you get to be a parent forever. Yeah. All these parents want to win in the first inning. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. There's more to it now. I do think the early years are foundational. I don't disrespect them. I do think feelings get formulated at 6, 9, 12, 14, 19 that may be harder. But let, let's be honest. I need people to understand. I'm going to paint a picture that everybody knows is true. 
and should really make all parents feel better about themselves and not make them crippled. How many times do you need to see a child reunited with a parent that did everything wrong? Walked out on them, didn't give a crap about them, cheated on their spouse, stole the money, were an alcoholic, it takes the kid oh but five minutes to like get one or two things off their chest (laughs) and they're back into the need to rebuild that relationship. These are our children. Like it's this so thought, it's so baked in, my man. And, and modern, modern nitpicking and political correctness is yeah. trying to scare us into thinking we're fucking this up. Which is how we get helicopter parents. Correct. And so then these kids are losers. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, so, look, do I wish I spent more time with my kids? Of course. Do I think the things that I'm doing will impact my kids in a positive way? Absolutely. Yeah. I genuinely do. Well, supply and demand, the scarcity, they appreciate the Yeah, and I don't want to win on, you're right, and I don't want to win on that, but you're not wrong, and I don't want them to take their mother for granted because she deserves the, like, so much. I'm, I'm more upset, I'm, I'd be more reactionary to that because of that, because I think she deserves, I hate when people get taken for granted. I live my life getting taken for granted because of the way I roll, so I'm very anti that, so I won't be a hypocrite and do that to my wife. You know, and then, and then I'm like, I break every rule because I want to like, you know, it's so amazing, it's so hard coming from nothing. Yeah. I don't want to give them anything. Mm. I want to give them everything, you know? I, I think we all go through, listen, there's nothing I've said that every parent isn't there shaking their head about right. because we're all living it. Here's the thing I am saying that's different. You're doing way better than you think. Right. I'm just tired of this. Like, first of all, I don't give a shit about what your opinion is on how I'm parenting. They're my kids, fuck face. <laughs> like, 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 right. like, and more importantly, my mom was snickered at her whole life because they never went anywhere. There were no family vacations. Right. She parented me. And all the Brooklyn Russian families, they'd go, the second they made a few bucks, they went on every cruise mm-hmm. and this and that. And now, at every Russian wedding, my parents are put on a throne <laughs> because of the way that their three kids ended up right. by comparison. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And so to that point, why I told that story is one, to give my parents credit, and two, this plays out. You can have opinions about how I'm parenting. Let's see how it plays out. It's a long game. Yeah. Let's see who has better kids. I think uh, the, other, the other thing Let's you mentioned. Let's see which kids are winners and happy. And winning is, comes in different forms. I know miserable billionaires. I know a kid right now grew up with nothing but money. He's successful right now. And what does he do every night? He does coke every night. That's what he does. And you know, like, he's gonna lose. Right. Like, right? And then I know kid, right, but everybody on, because of his Instagram thinks he's winning. You think Mm -hmm. he's winning, he lost. Meanwhile, I have friends that I grew up with, great parenting, still live in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. Like, going to the mall is like the legit thing, right? right? And they've won. So it's not just winning a like who, like, right? Like, like, right, my, my parents aren't heralded because of what I've achieved. Yes, because of what I've achieved, but who I am. I think what you said earlier about being selfish is really important. And something I preach a lot of times at seminars too is that you have to go out there and you have to figure out a way to take care of yourself. And first. And do the things that you love to do. First. So if you love doing this and you love being here, this is crucial. And you can't take care of him, you can't take care of him. First. And 500 other people that work first. inside this building. First. 750 and, <laughs> and first. I'm the engine. If I break, everybody else is fucked. Now, for me, what really got lucky was I'm built like my mom, which is my fuel for that engine is to make other people happy, which makes me popular, which makes me even more popular to people that know me the best, which is really, by the way, the way I judge myself. The way I've basically been judging myself through this really interesting path I'm living right now is do the people that know me the best like me the most. Yeah, like is he pumped about going to Belgium with you or is he like, fuck man, <laughs> like it's or, a paycheck. Or fuck. inevitably, like when he's getting six or seven DMs a month of like, is he, is his shtick, like, like back to the first rate, like my stuff comes off like a shtick because I'm an anomaly. Right. I am over energized, I am pumped, I am more grateful, I am louder, I am like more confident, I am different. I am, I'm different. And uh, I like that, I like when, I got a legit message the other day asking if you were a real human. If a, <laughs> it's a real so person. legitimately messaged me, is he a real human is like me? He <laughs> <laughs> he's real well. You get, you get that time? He's not a robot. I mean, I get those. I've had people like DM me asking if we plant people that come up to you on the street. Like, oh, oh, that's pretty good. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, see like to me that like, that's just funny. Yeah, that's like, t- like, I, 
when I hear that, I would think that if I planted a human to take a selfie with me, to act cool in a daily V, that that single move would crumble my entire empire. <laughs> because what, then I would have to make all these people that actually know, I'd have to keep them on the payroll. I wanna fire, I wanna fire these guys. <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, the re, one of the biggest reasons, I, I have no interest in being held hostage. Right. The reason you need to live naked is because you don't want anybody to have leverage over you. I'm not letting anybody have the upper hand on me. He would have the upper hand if I needed to make sure that he told them, no, 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 you know? Fuck that. And you can't hold those plates. Eventually one falls and then it's over. So one of the reasons I leave, live that kind of life is leverage. How has your uh, wife uh, been, has she been a part of a lot of the success of, of what you built up? She's the foundation of my success. She's the enabler of my success. If my wife, if my wife wasn't so selfless, I wouldn't be what I am today. And, and you know what, as a young man, I didn't understand that. You know, like. It seemed like you were so driven to even just. Yeah, use, even just like. like kind of born that way. Just yes, like, and that's like 16, black. like the thought like that, like if my, my mom, you know, my, as I grew up, my mom's teaching me to be a good man, we'd have these conversations and I'm like, mom, you didn't build the liquor store. Right. Dad built the liquor store. Yeah. The hell are you taking yeah, credit yeah. for? Why are you saying we and us? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, you know, what you realize is when you start tasting life is I can't, you know, I spend zero minutes worrying about what Lizzie's thinking anytime, always, which allows me to do 100% my thing. Right. Which is a gift and a curse. One, it's such a blessing to have someone like that be your support system. Second, it's daunting because I'm just always petrified to take it for granted and you, she does what I do. That's why I think, I think we love each other so much because we're similar in our real cores and we love ourselves so much <laughs> that I think it makes us appreciate the other one. Um, yeah, she's a big deal. Can you talk about the business to her in, in, no. and she gets it or just no? No, and by the way, I could and she's more than capable. She's got it like that, mm -hmm. I don't want to. Okay. I actually don't talk about the business at all. Like, I keep it very, like, even like, like you know, it's funny to have Jordan here, like, I, I spend more time, with, I spend as much time with Jordan as I do with my wife. Like, I see him every day for an hour, and it's like, you know, I don't complain, I don't talk about stuff. Once in a blue moon, if like, I'm pro actually, I, the things I've told him have been more predicated on trying to teach him how to be a businessman than the need to get it out. Mm. So, Just Okay. In, you're trying to you're trying to teach. You're trying to. You're trying I like to share teacher. What you yeah. Know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like men. I like it. I like it. I I'm a great like teammate, coach, lead. I'm a great leader. I just know it. I'm a great leader because I care about them more than I care about myself, which then makes them care enough about me that it matters. Uh, it's fun to have Tyler here and said, "Dear Tyler, literally came here to work for me for a year. Learn." I guess get the, I mean, I'm speaking for you, I'm just a front, get the brand association, get the exposure. Steal from you and later. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, you know, I would call it like get return value. Cause you know, I really, I feel like I, I and there are people who want to do that part. And by the way, the best part is I'm fine with that too. Yeah, whatever. Cause I'm on to the next thing the next day. But very quickly, and we had this conversation, I don't actually, how quickly did you realize, hmm, maybe I shouldn't just stay for a year. Maybe I should play this out a little bit longer. Pretty quickly. Like how quickly? Yeah. Um, like seriously, don't bullshit like me. like the first month or two of being on the team. That's it, that's great leadership, yeah. that, right? Young man comes up with a plan for his own and realizes, wait a minute, there's so much good here for me, maybe what's, because it's, he's not doing that because he's been tricked by me, he's doing it because he thinks it's in his best interest. To be part of something big. 100% Mike, who was my last trainer before Jordan, like the, like, the last couple of months, I could tell he was like, the, like maybe I shouldn't leave, like, right? He made YouTube videos, he was like, I'm really second guessing. <laughs> 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 I've already been like, I'm probably gonna stay longer than this. Like, he's gonna push boxing back. <laughs> I wanna do boxing next. I heard kind of, um, I'm actually gonna box on Friday. He's the box of the kid and uh, one of our neighbors used to box and so I said, dude, you gotta shake my hand right now and pick me up at 6 a.m. because otherwise I won't fucking go. We'll just talk cool. about it. But I'm excited about that. You know, you talked kind of recently about uh, return on investment and you talked about how that's everyone's kind of like first thought is how do I get my money back? How do I get my money back on this Facebook post, this Instagram right. post and, and so Tactics. 
Tactics over religion. Yeah, I've heard you talk about that before. So my gym is free. And when I made my gym free years ago, somebody said, why'd you make your gym free? And I said, to become a millionaire. And my friend who it was uh, Dick Lickerson, <laughs> long, <laughs> long story. Not his real name. No, long, long Go story. figure. Yeah, long story. <laughs> he's the intro voice of the podcast. He's is he? Yeah, he's got but anyway, voice. he just kind of tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, I, I believe in what you just said. Like, I, I can see it in your eyes. I know what you're, I know That's what you're cool. doing. That's cool. It's cool. And so the whole reason for making the gym free was a, a bunch of reasons. But one reason number one was to pay it back to powerlifting. I've gotten so much out of powerlifting. I've gotten you so felt much it on your, yeah, having cool. a team and having people yeah. around me to yeah. kind of lift yeah. me and push me forward that I felt amazing about it. But in your situation, you know, how do you, how do you get back your return, maybe in a different way, and it's not money? Money. <laughs> it's still money. It's, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm making a joke. I think that people are not... Smart, and let me tell you what I mean by that. I am so confused by people's inability to understand what's happening. Everything is predicated on action. Right. Like, it's just actions. I don't listen to what anybody says. I just pay attention to what they do. So for me, you know, I have very big ambitions, but one thing that I don't think, I'm blown away by people not remembering that for 13 years of my life out of school, I didn't build a brand. I wasn't speaking. I wasn't Gary V. My name was Gary Vaynerchuk and I worked in a liquor store every single day and I built an e-commerce business and built fulfillment. These are things I don't talk about. I invented fulfillment. I didn't know it. I didn't go to school for fulfillment. I invented fulfillment for myself. You know, I negotiated. You made me an entrepreneur cool, which before just meant you didn't have a job. And, and I don't think I did it. I honestly, I actually think, been part of I, actually, I think I've been a small piece of it, but a very small piece. I will tell you, I think that it was the Facebook movie that made it cool. Right. I, think it's, I think it's the extreme wealth at such a young age. Billionaires were 60 and old, and no 18 year old could associate with that. Yeah. When they were like, wait a minute, that dude's a billionaire, and he's wearing a hoodie and sneakers, and he's 27, that changed everything. Right. I think I rode the wave that was created more so than helped, you know, like, now the good thing is it was my truth. Unlike everybody else who was like meant to be a trainer, but now says they're an entrepreneur and a trainer because it's cool or they want to sell right. swag on Instagram mm-hmm. or you see where I'm going? Yeah. What's been fun for me is it's my truth. Right. Like, like that's fun, right? This isn't a fly by night thing. This was my truth. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that I give, so I think, to answer your question, it's not the money. Anybody that's really smart would know, I knew how to make money before I became me. I made money before I became me. When I invested in Twitter and Tumblr and Uber, that was before I became who everybody knows me as. Right. I don't need to monetize my audience. I don't, be, one, you know, I'll take this opportunity to make sure you use it. I don't begrudge people that monetize their audience. I'm just reminding them that I don't. Right. I'm just, it's just a, it's an important conversation. And somebody will jump in and say, well yeah Gary, what about your books and right. your, your t-shirts? And then I would say again, you are not smart because if you understood the economics behind that in comparison to what I do, I will make more money giving one speech than I will in everything I do in t-shirts this entire year. Right. Don't you think it'd be smarter for me to do that? I do it because it's fun. I like somebody wearing a t-shirt with my quote on it because I am vain and I like it, <laughs> right? And like, I like giving them out because everybody, I noticed, like, again, people are not smart. When I started this 60 Second Club and it's working for me on Instagram, I'm giving away my books. A lot of people have the books. So if I create t-shirts, it's something for me to give back which creates even more of a relationship. And by the way, I want to remind everybody, I am by hand, not somebody here, you know this, you know this, I, me, me, by hand going into my comments, reading it, replying that they won, tagging them, screen shooting it, drawing, <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm doing it. Yeah. And so, so, my answer is very simple. I want to leave a legacy. I want to be the greatest, most admired entrepreneur of all time and I want to do it by not amassing the most wealth. I want to do it by amassing the most wealth 
and give back to the community in parallel because I am leaving enormous amounts of money on the table by doing what I'm doing in content. And you know, do people not remember all these people cost me money? <laughs> he cost me more money than all the money I'll make on t-shirts this year. It's not a good trade. Oh, they don't get it. <laughs> Charging a lot. You know, like, they don't get it. Yeah. And, and by the way, I am not mad because 99% of the people are not good enough business people to go through the whole process in their brain. So I'm not mad. I just disagree with people's opinion <laughs> when, when they, you know, and I laugh at what their, their comments and I enjoy the negative comments and social because it drives me and reminds me that one, I need to respect and be grounded at all times and two, that I'm just dramatically smarter than a lot of people. So we got you deadlifting, we got you into, into some fitness. Yes. How do we get you on a cycle of steroids? <laughs> so this is, this, is a funny, this is a funny conversation. This is vegetables to me. And I brought this up to you. Now, I don't think I'm gonna do it because I think I'm too grounded in its yeah. vegetables, but I, and I'm not educated, but I can tell you right now, I'm very fascinated from the couple of, he- so the reason I don't wanna speak about this is less about me not wanting to do steroids is I don't wanna be a hypocrite. I make fun of, and you know this, headline readers. All right. mm-hmm. I know what's going on in Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram. Right, and right. Mm-hmm. I don't, I know the headlines are, hmm, maybe steroids isn't as bad as you necessarily think. Hmm, maybe after a certain age it's, okay, maybe not, at 16 it's scarier than maybe if you're 45. Like, I'm actually weirdly fascinated by it but I also know I'm a headline reader. It's a couple of conversations with Mike, it's a couple of conversations with him, it's a couple of tweets I've seen, it's a couple of things I've heard. Yeah, but you know, like to me, smoking was fine for you in 1947. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I'm way more scared about putting a cell phone to my head and getting brain cancer than steroids. Yeah. So like I think people are not smart. Right. And so I, I would tell you that I, if I had to make prediction, I would tell you it's not out of the question for me to do a cycle. I'm being Next serious. Time I come back here, you'll be just jacked out of your mind. It's, not, it's, 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 not, it's, yeah. not, it's not out of the question. Now, I'm in, I am a little bit of a purist, AKA, I love, I'm still enjoying, because you know, yeah. how long have you been working out? Oh shit, since I was 12, I'm Good. 40. So Good, time. So you've seen it. Yeah. Like this is the first time in my life that I'm actually seeing something happen mm-hmm. out of the work you put in. That's so I'm enjoying, awesome. right. So I mean, I'm actually a pure, like it's the reason I'm doing, the same reason I'm doing all my own social media is the same reason I would probably not do steroids because of that, because I like doing it, right. more so than me thinking it's bad or what, got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was like sense. Yeah. So if there were steroids that helped people in business, what things would, they, would it improve about them? Emotional intelligence, okay. empathy, gratitude, self-awareness. The businesses break because human beings break them. Companies don't get bigger because all these assholes want to micromanage everything because it makes them feel better. If you spread all the uh, world's wealth, they've said before, if you spread all the world's wealth around to everybody equally, it would end up in the pockets of the rich in a very short period of time. Of course. <laughs> Talent because is ta- personal guys, not talent there. is talent. Right. Winners win. Like, that's just the game. And so the people that are not in a path of winning need to do something drastically to break their behavior because that's why they're not winning. Normally, it's association of something and someone else. One of the things that is driving me more than ever is for some reason, my communication style penetrates people that are not normally penetrated by communication styles. And to be very frank with you, I feel guilty if I didn't continue down that path because it's helping people. I mean, yeah. I don't know what else to say. It's That's, fucking awesome. I think, uh, when I listen to you, what, what resonates with me is uh, it almost feels like I'm listening to a podcast or listening to a conversation as if I'm in, I feel like I'm part of it. I feel like I'm in the room as well. And we know from doing this podcast yeah. that We've had a similar impact on people where there's been people that are listening to it in their car. Well, I'll tell and you. They've shouted well, stuff t- out because well, they felt well, like Well, I'll tell you, and I'll give there. you a nice compliment. I even feel it while you're doing this. This feels much more like we're actually hanging out yeah. Yeah. than I'm doing Thank a podcast. Genuinely. And I do a lot of them, and some people are good at it. Right. But maybe even the dynamic of two of you, like, and maybe actually, no question, because I know myself having them three here, but like, I feel it. Yeah. All right. cool. Makes sense. I think that part of it too is that people listen to podcasts with earbuds and it, it just oh, I love, right I'm obsessed with audio. <laughs> like you, and again, 
watch me, don't listen to what I said. I haven't talked a lot about podcasting, right. but if you guys are you know, you're consuming me, I rebranded it from the Ask Gary V show to the mm-hmm. Gary V audio experience, right? right? I, I started pushing it very aggressively in my social channels. Uh, I created a podcast tab in, on my website. I it, took it to all platforms, SoundCloud and Spotify. I, if you really watch every single piece of my content, hired an audio guy because you've seen him in a couple mm-hmm. of shots. Like, like, don't, like, I haven't gotten to tell you about podcasting or anybody about podcasting. One, it's been covered very well. Mm-hmm. I'm not a podcasting pioneer. This has been around. Ferris and Rogan and Lewis Howell, I mean, there's pl- uh, Pat Flynn, there's plenty of people, that, people have done it. People have talked about it, people understand it. It's just that I'm, like, so that's why I keep saying, watch me, don't listen to me. Makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Back to, I brought it up earlier, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't listen to what you're saying. I wanna see your act. You, I love when people are like, I'm a good, everybody's, I'm a good person. <laughs> I have never tweeted a single donation I've ever given. I'm more than willing to bring out my tax form right now and come. I always st- think that's weird. I always think that's weird. Yeah. You know, I always think that's weird. It's you think it's weird because of how you're grounded. Yeah. You think it's weird for the same reason I think it's weird because you can taste the bullshit behind it. <laughs> Doesn't taste very good. There's only one reason you like me is because I'm the pure version of it. That's right. I know. And so the reason I don't do that is I'm not tricked by somebody saying just donate it to Haiti after the fact. They're doing it for their own selves. One of my favorite things that you talk about is uh, not being fancy. Yes. So if we could just end on a fancy rant. Let's do then, it, let's do it. <laughs> then uh, I would be more than satisfied. Okay, good. You want me to expand on it? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think when you make your first fucking dollars you need a fucking Lambo. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't understand that people don't understand that like, I, I love it. I mean, I, you know, and listen, again, empathy. You never had anything. You just were broke. I mean, you, like, it sounds like, yeah, I'd love to know yeah. a little more details. Like, I'm, I'm not mad. If you want to go buy a nice purse or a nice watch, or, I'm not mad. I just, I think it's important. And by the way, let me talk about a flaw. I actually think I'm very bad at that. I don't celebrate shit. We, you know, like, fuck. I, like, this is actual conversation between me and my yeah, brother. I my think brother. That's excellent in the sense that it will pre- could prevent you from potentially being an addict. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, know, because you would want to celebrate with alcohol or right. This or that. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe. But like. No, it's actually way worse than that, my man. <laughs> it's like actually like not even acknowledging it. Like it's it's actually quite scary. Barry Sanders scoring a touchdown, flipping the ball to the right. It's very, you know, it's so he funny. I'm such a polar opposite. Like, I, it, it's so weird. That's exactly what it is. Yet, until you just said that, I would have thought that I would have been to if I was in football and would have like like I would think that <laughs> you know. And, and I and I do think and I do think my strength comes. And you know, I often think that I'll call my autobiography, you know, obviously I have the Honey Empire thing now. There's a big part of me that thinks it'd be really funny that I just called it, he did it because when I buy the Jets, you know. <laughs> That's right. But I do think the purest form of my autobiography, like the purest title of my life is gonna be The Bridge. I think I pull so hard from opposite directions in a lot of my, like, right. you know, like, yeah, I mean, you know what it is? That strong man. You know what? You ever see that? Where yeah. The guy's holding the I'll, I'll, actually, the actually, I'm gonna articulate it. It's more for you than anything else. At a macro, I'm the least fancy. In a micro, I can be fancy, right? <laughs> right? Like, like, that makes sense. yeah. Like in my micro, on stage, but in my, it's almost like in my, it's a steak in the sizzle. Right. I got lots of sizzle, but my fucking steak is, you know, like that's it. <laughs> Right? So fancy. I, I, you know, I generally, for your audience, I think that too many of you want stuff and it's the quickest way to not have stuff. I make products and, and anytime I've gotten fancy, wham, it hits me right back in the face and it doesn't fucking work. And I'm like, fuck, I thought this was such a good idea. I had all these intentions and I had all the best intentions and I tried to fancy it up and it's fucked up. And I think, and I think one of the biggest reasons I'm upset with entrepreneurship through Instagram Instagram entrepreneurs, actually that's a good new term. (laughs) Instagram entrepreneurs upset me because they only push watches and hot chicks and private planes and and uh, to me it's the process. To me, you know, know, when Jordan and I talk about working out and when he's impressed with me or happy with me, it just makes so much sense to me because I am happy. I, I don't need to like dress up and go to Equinox. 
You know, I need to just. <laughs> you guys all like that, huh? That's like, that was a good one. Uh, we should do that right now. I need to just put in the work. Like I like the grind. I like the process. And I even like this. I even you know what's funny, and he'll probably tell you this. I like the steps back. I I I kind of weirdly enjoy. I get mad when I know I had a bad session. And I work out seven days a week. Yeah. Now we also like one day could be like just it's like we're just rolling out. Soft it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm there seven days a week, and some days and some days don't make sense. Like some days was like the day before was a soft tissue day, and so I should be super rested and a solid day of sleep. And somehow it just didn't click. And other days like he'll go back and actually answer that person. He's not human because I just watched him sleep three, four, and five hours and have the three yeah. best workouts. I don't even understand it. And he's 41. He's like, you know, like, yeah. and he wasn't been doing like so. I like I like the ups and downs. I love the journey, my man. I love the journey of life. I love the journey of business. I love the journey I'm going through with fitness. I love the process. You have to love the process. If you love the process, you've already won. It's how you fix it. Right. The way you fix the game, like the way you hedge it, the way it's like you fix it, like fixing it. Like yeah. I've I've fixed my outcome. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if I buy the Jets. The ambition to and the journey to try to achieve it right. is the game. The Jets are so fucked. I've been a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Poughkeepsie, New York. I've been a fan forever, and they've been, it's been so, bad, bro. They've been so fucked Listen, for so long. We got to bring back fucking Ken O'Brien or Richard Altoon, Todd. And Freeman McNeil. I think the uh, I think the uh, I think the truth is like that only fits my narrative more because yeah. when the prodigal son comes home <laughs> and buys them and brings a championship, I, I'll get to be the LeBron of the Jets. Hey, well, I'll take the Thank, Thank you. you so much for your Thank time. You. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much.